Right, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kieran, and yes, welcome back to a scary little episode of a new survival horror, and today we're actually going to be talking about a game I've actually had planned for the series for quite some time. There's not much in terms of footage for this title, but from the screenshots and its lack of attention, I decided to go ahead and do a video on it anyway, because we do have stuff like, you know, screenshots, <laughs> like I just said a second ago, and details on the plot and gameplay. Also, what pushed me to cover this game is the map, which I found on, I think it was Twitter, I seen it, and I was like, oh, what is this? This looks funky. It gives me like a Rule of Rose sort of vibe for some reason, just because of the whole, like, you know, hand-drawn child sort of thing. It looked so cool, I'll have it on the screen at the moment. Anyway, welcome to a little game called Summerford, an upcoming survival horror title being developed by Nosy Valley Studios. This studio comprises of three people, that being the former EA Marketing, Rob Clark, and his wife and nephew. So it's like a nice wee family project. The game has also not really been in development for that long, with production only starting like, what, back in January this year? But still, I will be diving straight into it because it does look interesting, and if you're a fan of classic survival horror, then Summerford is a game that you should definitely keep your eye on. So let's enter the survival horror, starting with, you guessed it, the story. Summerford follows a character called Sarah as she enters the small English town called, well, Summerford. <laughs> size, size in the name. Back in 1963, the village was selected to be the site of the UK's first nuclear power facility, a nuclear energy laboratory. 23 years later, the facility suffered a catastrophic reactor failure, causing radioactive fallout to spill across Summerford and the surrounding countryside. This forced the government to evacuate thousands and declare a permanent 10 km exclusion zone as, you know, this area basically turned into the next Chernobyl. 37 years have passed since this event and no civilian has been able to access the exclusion zone. Until now. I always love it when they always add a until now sort of part to sentences when. So the main takeaway from this game is basically don't be a cocky little cunt and enter a radiation zone because you'll end up with either a serious illness and there is also that tiny chance, in real life obviously it's tiny, but in games it's massive, uh, you might be attacked by a mutated monster, so yeah, there's that. I think the main protagonist is in fact from this town, so that's why they came, uh, they came back, instead of going here because you know they're a dark tourist. Unravel the mystery of the Summerford planet, face far more personal demons in a four hour long journey, with two separate routes through the game and multiple endings. I'm curious by the fact that it's only like four hours long, I mean, good on you for having like a very specific time scale in mind, but with a game like this it's kind of weird, uh, because I'm usually expecting like an eight hour playthrough. But yeah, again, it, they did say there's going to be two separate routes and multiple endings, so obviously like four hours will be your in first initial playthrough, and then if you want to play through it again, which you might do, if you want to get all the different endings and see all the different areas and stuff like that, uh, then that'll be a good eight hours onto your game as well, or maybe seven, I don't know. Again though, we haven't really seen too much on this game, so I can't really judge. <laughs> I do find that a wee bit funny, uh, that a game like this is four hours long, like an actual survival horror game with combat, puzzles and all that is only four hours long, yet a horror game where you literally walk down hallways lasts for bloody 12 hours. I find that mental. <laughs> Summerford definitely gives me like a Silent Hill vibe with the visual style, but for some reason it actually does remind me of this weird narrative game that I played years ago called Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. That game didn't really have me, I'll be honest. It didn't really, it didn't really, you know, entice me to go back to it once I played it. But the reason why I'm sort of comparing it to this is because it is set in like an abandoned countryside English town, but you know less radiated. Obviously, you know, in Summerford it'll be a lot more fucked up, but I can imagine I'm gonna get the, like, the same feels as I did with this one. I don't know, there's always that certain feeling you get when you're in that sort of countryside English town. I don't know what it is. I think it's just peaceful, you know? It's like going to Hobbiton, but obviously with Summerford it's gonna be crawling with creepy crawlies, so... I don't think we're going to get that Hobbiton feel. So yeah, that's all I really could find on the story, but the video will not stop here, yes, because we are going to be diving into the gameplay next. Summerford aspires to be a pure classic survival horror game, something like you would see usually back in the good old PS2 days. That means fully expect limited combat, exploration, puzzles, and even fixed camera angles. At first I was really unsure about the fixed cameras because like, there were some screenshots where it actually showed a more traditional third person perspective, but it was later confirmed in like a devlog on Steam that it is definitely fixed camera angles. They were just kind of like messing around with it in development, so okay, that's cool. 
Now, I have been playing Injection Pie 23, uh, but I, by the way, if you haven't played that game, you should definitely go check it out. It's on the PlayStation Store. It's only on Europe PlayStation Store, it's not on the US, but you know, I can get into that in another video. But the point is, that game had the option between the first person, the third person, and the fixed. And, you know, it would be kind of a cool option to have that in, like, I want, I want to say, like, every survival horror game, but I know that's kind of uh, not possible to do sometimes. But right here is, like, you've seen they have over the shoulder camera, so it's kind of, it would be kind of nice to have that sort of option, you know? That's just me, anyway. Anyway, just, just saying. But yeah, I know a lot of you out there are going to be very enticed by the fact that it is fixed camera angles because a lot of horror games nowadays, like I said before, are first person or, you know, classic third person, so. Like I said before, there will be combat in the game, but the extent of this combat is still not really known. One of the screenshots has Sarah holding a handgun, so you know, I'm guessing there'll be a few weapons kicking around the village. And since it's going for the classic survival horror style of gameplay, expect limited resources like ammo and health items, which, to be honest, it makes sense because the UK is quite limited at guns. Guns are definitely 100% more difficult to obtain over here than the US, so like, you know, stumbling upon like a mass amount of ammo is not gonna happen or like stumbling across like a fucking AR-15 that's just not gonna happen either <laughs> unless Summerford has like an army base but you know I, I doubt it. Now we don't have the names of what we're gonna be struggling against in Summerford but we do have this concept image that kind of gives us an idea. It seems like enemies are going to be like irradiated sort of zombies but have like fungus and mushrooms grown from them. A clearer comparison that I can actually make here is with the clickers from Last of Us which did the whole like zombies embracing nature thing really well. When I just said, <laughs> sorry, like, when I wrote this down, I'm like, yeah, zombies embracing nature. It just kind of reminds you of, like zombie hippies or something like that. Players will have a basic inventory system and things like that to help them survive in the town, but my curiosity is kind of leaning towards the puzzle side of things. Obviously, you can't give away too much details on the puzzles, or else it would just kind of ruin some of the puzzles in the game, but it would be nice to see some gameplay or just screenshots on a puzzle that's been worked on to just give us an idea of what we're going to be dealing with. Again, guys, I do really apologise for the lack of details in this video, but this video is really meant to just kind of get this game more known to the public and let everyone know that it's actually in development. That's the entire point to the series as well because like I feel like most of these games just kind of disappear into the background and are rarely talked about because they are not that well known or you know they just are overshadowed by shit like Visage or Amnesia, you know, all these walking simulator games, they always overshadow these little guys. By the way, I'm not saying like Visage is uh, shit or anything, it's actually, I find it like, it looks like a really cool game. It's just that there's way too many just walking simulator horror games out there, you know? So that was Summerford, what do you think about it so far? Let me know down in the comments below. Again, I do apologise for the lack of details here, but again, I just wanted to get the game out there and into your radar. So if you want to keep an eye on the game, I suggest going and following their Twitter account or wishlisting the game on Steam. I'll leave them both down in the description below. Special thanks to my brilliant new patrons, Devil, Proxy1 and TJ Monster for your continued support over on my Patreon. Thank you guys so much. So yeah, Summerford, I really like the look of this game. I'm really curious on where it's going to go. I like how it's only a four hour game because nowadays like there is a lot of games that are lasting for like 20 hours and those are even horror games as well. And I'm like, oh man, this is just way too long. I don't have time for this. But so it's nice to have like this little short experience I can like just dive into. And then if I want to dive into it again, then I'll dive into it for the second playthrough. And also it seems like a really nice like stream game as well. Like a four hours for a stream, like that seems like a good little length there. So when this game comes out, I'm definitely going to be streaming it. 100%. But yeah, overall, yeah, the game looks cool. I like it. I dig it. Oh yeah, by the way guys, yes, we are leading into E3, so if you're watching this now, uh, I'm probably streaming live over on my Twitch, you should go check that out because I'm going to be reacting to the Xbox Game Conference, uh, then throughout the E3 week I'm going to be uploading so many videos. I think I'm going to be doing one a day, which is going to be absolutely mental and I'm going to be exhausted by the end of it, but it's fine, it's all good, don't worry about it. But anyway guys, thank you so much for watching the video and I shall see you all later. Bye bye